mighty Henry V managed to win the Battle of Agincourt against all odds. Well, the story starts slightly before 1415 when Henry V, King of England, decides he wants to uh, get the French throne as he thinks is his right. As it says on English coat of arms, Dieu est mon droit, God am I right, to the throne of France. So he gets a huge expeditionary force together and they set off across the English Channel. And as this ancient artifact uh, shows us, we can see the route that the expedition took. Authentic, as you can see, because it has the oldie medieval tea stains on it. They started from the Isle of Wight here, and they sailed across, well, from Southampton, and they sailed across to our Fleur. Uh, and there, using the first use of cannon ever in warfare, they managed to take the uh, French town of Arfleur. Then, Henry needed to get back, but he couldn't reload his soldiers onto the ships at Arfleur. He needed to get to the uh, town of Calais, which was still held by the English at the time. And so they began the trek along northern France through Normandy. And there, as you can see, as evidence shows, his soldiers were struck by illness, by the bloody flux, and the plague hit them. All the time, they were being shadowed by the French soldiers. And so, before they could reach Calais, they were blocked off by the huge French army. French soldiers had come from throughout France to, uh, to stop the English threats, the cream of the French nobility from all parts of the country. And look at what they were facing. The English soldiers, they had been on campaign for months now. They had the plague, they had the flux. Uh, there was poo everywhere, it must have absolutely stunk. You know, they were in a bad way. And they were, they were facing at the field of Agincourt, you know, outnumbered, some say three to one, some say six to one, but they were heavily outnumbered by these uh, rich, brave French knights who had come to uh, get this, get this uh, incursion into their country out. And as you can see, they have their, their shining armour, and they're all wearing their, their coats of arms, their crests. You know, this was, this was going to show uh, the world how great the French nobility was, the French knights were. And so, uh, on a dim morning in 1415 in northern France, the two armies faced up to each other. The English, the few thousand English here uh, to the south, and they needed to get north to Calais up here, and if they could get north to Calais, then they could get boats home and to freedom. But blocking their path here, we have the French knights, the great French nobility in all of their shining armour, and also uh, their peasants as well. Now, the French king, he couldn't make it on the day, Charles, um, because he was still in Rouen, because he had, he had attacks of madness and... Uh, and when the English invaded, he actually believed he was made completely of glass and was afraid that he'd shatter him into a million pieces if he got involved. So there was the Constable of France, Charles d'Albret, who was uh, supposedly in charge of all of these uh, French nobles. Um, and the battlefield here was chosen very carefully by Henry V. He thought this would be a really good place to, to face the uh, French ability because of the trees here um, and it means that there's a very narrow battlefield which means these huge French numbers um, would uh, their, their impact would be reduced because only a few of them could attack the English position at the time and so um, the night before the battle or not the night, the day before the battle the rains fell down in really heavy rains and all the French were getting impatient, they thought, oh, we can't really attack in the rain, we still want to wait for more people to come and join us. So some of the French uh, nobility, they decided that they were going to try out their great war horses. And they began to, um, to ride up and down uh, on the battlefield, practicing their charges. Now that compared, uh, combined with the rain, meant that all of this battleground became very, very, very muddy and boggy. But, the French on their horses, they didn't care, they thought, oh, this is going to be an easy victory tomorrow. We're clearly going to destroy these, these English vermin. So, the next day dawned, 
and the uh, and the English knew that this was the day they were going to have to do battle. Their their king Henry V got out his chainmail again, and he gave a very inspiring uh, speech with a crown that fits uh, speech to his knights, and he said. Oh, you few, you happy few, you band of brothers here on St. Swithin's Day, and take me these bones, and... Anyway, a wonderful speech, immortalised by Henry V, um, by Shakespeare, of course, his play. Henry V whipped up the English troops, and so they were incredibly uh, fired up, and they, they knew that, that they had a great leader. Meanwhile, Henry V, he ordered some of his... Uh, archers to hide in the woods on the side. Now this was technically called galling, G-A-L-L-I-N-G, galling, and it was against all laws of warfare at the time, all laws of chivalry, uh, sort of the Geneva Convention at the time. Now, this was cheating, but Henry V, desperate, outnumbered three to one, or six to one, depending on the figures you look at, uh, knew that he had to try something. He also ordered his uh, his. He also ordered his uh, soldiers the day before the battle to, to make stakes. A lot of them had them with them already, um, to make stakes uh, out of wood, and they put these in the ground to stop the French um, cavalry advance. But there they are, you know, their trousers are full of their own excrement, they're covered in plague boils, um, they're heavily outnumbered, but still they're going to fight for Harry and for God and for England. So, the battle starts, and the French nobility, they all line up um, at, the top of the, at the top of the forest, at the top of the pass through, through the woods, and, uh, and they're all so keen to prove their bravery, they've all got, you know, you know thousands of pounds worth of, 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 of armour on, you know, this is when they can prove uh, their, how wonderful they are, they can prove their love to their fair maidens back home, and so, they all begin to charge, all at once, a huge... Um, cavalry charge uh, starts thundering through the forest but as you can see they begin to get squashed as they're charging uh, which leads to some chaos then from the woods the uh, archers with their longbow um, start firing at them from the side and then a huge hailstorm of arrows comes from the English positions at the end of the track. These hit the French knights and these great huge longbows, when the arrows strike the knights, it goes straight through their armour, so powerful is the blow. Uh, as talked about before, some of the arrows even impale the knights onto their horses. And so this causes huge chaos amongst the ranks of the French knights, and many of them try to turn and flee. Now, such is the pile of, uh, now, of dead knights and horses and armour um, in the battlefield uh, that these knights find it very, very hard to retreat, causing even more chaos. Meanwhile, the French peasants here, who uh, also want a bit of the action, they're advancing behind the French knights as they charge. So as the French knights start to retreat away from these hail of longbowmen, um, they're blocked by these advancing peasants. And so they end up having to hack down their own peasants to try and retreat. Now, some of the uh, French knights, they don't get, they don't, uh, get caught up in this chaos, and they do manage to reach the English lines, where there is ferocious fighting, and clearly their, their whole cavalry charge is stopped by these fighters. There is, um, there is a heavy fighting here, but the English, buoyed by the initial successes that they've had here, fight very bravely, and they manage to capture lots of the French nobility, and they keep them as prisoners of war. Now, at one point during the battle, um, it appears to Henry V that uh, that the French might manage to regroup up here and attack once more, and he's terrified of this happening. And uh, the, um, the events are quite hazy, but at one point during the battle, he orders that all of these 
uh, French nobility who have been captured for ransom for money, um, that they should all be killed just in case they manage to join the fighting again. And so there's a huge bloodbath on the sidelines as the English hack the French to pieces. But by this stage in the battle, the French know that all is lost. The, uh, the French nobility have fled from the chaos, the peasants seeing the disorder of the battlefield uh, flee as well. And the English absolutely triumphant, losing you know, a handful of men, you know, no more than a hundred men, uh, some estimates say 50, 60 men in the whole battle, they're absolutely triumphant and they manage to um, walk from the battlefield to Calais and to home.